Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to day 17 of 30 days of nine. Today, we're going to be looking at the group by node, which is one node that I cannot live without. This is a powerhouse of a node because it allows you to perform aggregations and several different functions, which lets you gain an insight into your data. You can use it a lot for both analyzing your data, but also understanding your data before you go on to build models. So this group by node, once you open it up, you arrive at this first page, which you get to specify on what column would you like to base your grouping off on. Let's do that based on the airline name. And in this second page here, you get to specify which columns and what aggregation methods you would like to use. So for a simple scenario, let's base this off of the counts of flights for each airline. Now, notice that if you're doing a basic count, you can actually do that on any of these columns here because you're doing a count of the rows. So I could just grab a random one and we should get the same thing as we if we use the transaction ID. Over here, you can perform aggregations based on patterns. So if we go back here, you can notice that some of our columns, their names are similar at the start. Like we have four columns talking about the origin. So we can actually we can actually decide to do the exact same grouping based off of this. So to do that, you do that in the pattern based aggregation pane. So I could decide that not regex. We want wildcards. I could decide that for any column which looks like origin, I would like to do the mode of that column. So I want to see the most common value for that column in all cases. And you can also perform type-based aggregations. So for each variable type, you can decide to do the same thing. Let's say for the long variable type, I would like to do a main in all instances. At the bottom here, you can decide how your column should be named. You can decide, and this is what I usually go for, to name it based on the aggregation method and the column name. This can be useful so that you know exactly what kind of aggregations you did if you're looking at your flow later on. Or you can decide to keep the original name. Sometimes this works if the group is, you know, your final node. But if you join it back to the data, it could look a bit confusing, although Nime does change the name a little bit when you have the same column name. But if you want to keep track of what aggregations you've done, it's best to go with this one. You can process the memory to speed things up. And you can decide to retain the row order. Highlighting is something used for visualizations. I don't usually check this one. And then over here, you have the description pane. And here you can see details about each aggregation method because NIME does offer you a lot of different aggregation methods which do change according to your variable type but you can see what each one does by going here to read that you can you can also work with flow variables which one already covering here but basically flow variables allows you to keep your workflow pretty dynamic okay let's go back to the settings so so far we're grouping by the airline name but let's also group by the flight year you can group by as many things as you want, but of course, the more groupings you have, the longer your table becomes. For each airline name and for each year, we're going to see the number of flights that occurred. And for every column starting with the word or starting with a string ORI for origin, we're going to see the mode, the most frequently occurring a value there. And then finally, for the type-based aggregations, for all the long data types, we're going to see a mean. Let's just go ahead and bring all the numerical ones, because why not? We're going to see a mean for all of those. Okay, so we're going to go now and run this. And in how many seconds? Like three seconds? <laughs> it's done all that aggregations for us. And we did do it. We did do quite a lot. So we did 23 aggregations. So first, let us spend some time on the on the number of, of flights for each year. So first, I'm going to sort this descending, then I'm going to sort the year descending. So I could see that for 2016, Southwest Airlines, they had the most flights. Uh, 2015, they also had the most flights. 2015, also Southwest Airlines. And 2013, also Southwest Airlines. Hmm, interesting. 
And then American Airlines comes second in 2016. 2015, that spot also goes to American Airlines. 2014, Delta took the crown. And 2013, American Airlines took the crown. Here you have the airport, which was flown out of the most frequently. And you have the same thing for the origin city, the origin state. Scrolling down, we have more aggregations. We can see the full origin state name and we can see the averages for all of these numerical columns. Now for the means done according to all the numeric data types, a lot of this doesn't make sense right now because I do need to do time transformation for a lot of them. So I'm not going to spend so much time on this, but assuming these were real numerical values, you can easily do means or whatever aggregation you want on a whole lot of columns of the same variable type now let's go back to the group by node for a bit because i want to show you the options you have so for string variable types you can do so many different aggregations count concatenate first last list list sorted maximum minimum missing value count mode percentage set unique count unique concatenate with count unique Oh, sorry, unique concatenate and then unique count. For numerical ones, you could do concatenate, correlation, count, covariance, first, your metric means, your matrix standard deviation, kurthosis, last, list, sorted, maximum, minimum, mean, absolute, deviation. quantile range second moment I actually don't know what the second moment is i have to google that set skewness standard deviation sum anyway so many things and then for the time variable types date time variable types you can do different ones also listed here so there is hardly any aggregation you can't do i don't have a time variable i'll have shown you but i'll have one later on so yes, uh, you can see how this is way, way, way more powerful than a pivot in Excel, right? I don't think I have to convince you of that. Definitely the group by node is one node that's my favorite. It's one to note, one to watch, and one to use a lot. Tomorrow we are going to be looking at the pivoting node, which is super powerful and also very important as well. Thank you for staying with me this long, and I shall see you tomorrow. Have a lovely weekend, guys. Goodbye.